Hi everyone, my name is Pragya and I'm the co-founder and English head trainer at Ace My Prep and I want to welcome you all to today's lecture, All You Need to Know About Duolingo Test with Ace My Prep Duolingo Masterclass. So I would like to introduce myself a bit. Um, so I am a published, published engineer with uh, multiple researchers and projects. As a student, I always wanted to go abroad and I even managed to get a lot of offer letters from the top universities. However, I had to leave my study abroad journey due to some unavoidable circumstances. But here I am today, making sure that you all are able to uh, succeed your study abroad journey. And I'm here to make sure you pursue it. Uh, that is where my passion lies. And as a professional, I've been a top scorer of uh, multiple English e exams. I have been guiding students for a while. I have been a trainer. And that is why I founded Ace My Prep, uh, so that you all guys don't face any difficulty regarding your S Prep or admissions. So, there has been an increasing concern about the accessibility and the security of the English testing for international students. Now, universities are seeking new methods of enrollment and admissions. So today, uh, in this lecture, you will learn more on how these universities and the admission committees are tackling the current situation and how the dual language test provides an accessible and a more insightful form of uh, student testing. At this point, I will quickly move on. Uh, there should be less talking and let's quickly move on to the first slide of our class. So I would love to introduce Ace My Prep to you guys. Ace My Prep is an online academy for excelling in English, English proficiency exams. Uh, we have been catering multiple uh, proficiency tests like IELTS, TOEFL, and now Duolingo. And we guarantee an excellent score uh, by uh, making sure we have a, uh, you have a strategic training uh, learning experience with us. We actually help the students uh, by hand holding them throughout, you know, from the day one, when they come to us thinking about studying abroad, to test prep and all the way to their admissions. We cater to each student uh, with their own learning capability and create test prep completely designed right for you. So all of all of this is done by strategic training, and uh, it's quite different from the traditional way of tutoring, and that is what makes you succeed faster. So our mission is to make test prep, test prep affordable by smarter solutions for you guys and providing valuable information that is going to make sure you succeed in your exam. So in terms of IELTS or Duolingo, what you need to understand is there is a set pattern uh, which you need to understand, right? So that is how we work. We have under, understood the test from in depth along with the thousands of students who've given the test with us and who have prepared and they have shared this, their insights as well. So we will teach you the best strategies, the tips and tricks that actually work in your exam. We will help you to get all the resources that you need and make this a one-stop shop for you guys to excel the Duolingo test. So you can see uh, how many students have taken the coaching with us and uh, we have had around 7,000 students who we've helped. And out of all those, 5,321 actually managed to get their dream score. Uh, it's quite great. And out of all these students, there have been students who went abroad and are now currently studying and are in touch with us. And it actually feels great. So going forward, um, here are some of the reviews from our students uh, from different domains. So first of all, First of all, we have John who took IELTS coaching from us and uh, he managed to get a band seven. Uh, we have Masi who's, uh, who, who actually took help uh, from us in terms of co uh, consultancy and admissions. And she's now studying in UK. That's actually great. And it's great to see her successful. Uh, next, we have Kanika and uh, we helped her latest uh, with the Duolingo test and uh, Amidst this COVID-19, all the universities have changed their test uh, prep 
um, requirements from, uh, you know, um, IELTS or TOEFL to Duolingo test. And that is something the students are facing a lot of trouble with. I'm not sure, but even uh, out of all of you students, there might be students who have to, uh, you know, have to do it on demand from the university. So Kanika was a such of a student and we helped her with the Duolingo test. She had just one week left and yes, she, she could rock it. And uh, she's now currently, she's um, currently deferred for USA and will be joining the university soon. So, now let us quickly move on to talking about testing and uh, technology, which is implemented to create an English exam, right? So test prep has always been one of my favorite subjects and uh, it's really great having technology on top of it. It can serve as a bridge between the students and uh, all the sources of insight, right? And that is why I've amassed all the dependency on technology. Ace My Prep has also currently uh, completely shifted to online methods uh, amidst COVID-19. And uh, this Duolingo test has also done the same. It has provided a great solution as an English proficiency exam for international enrollment. So international education is uh, currently going through a dynamic time and uh, we want to talk about this uh, about this industry trend right now and how it's affecting the student admissions. So we will actually have um, a basic foundation set up for ourselves uh, before we go about learning what Duolingo is and how do we need to prepare uh, for all those students who are currently unfamiliar and for all the students who are clear, we will go under the hook to understand uh, all the details about the test so that you can actually master it um, real quick and in a nice method. Right. So let us go about studying how international education has been in 2020 and till now so that you have in-depth clarity on what is currently going on, not just for Duolingo, but in terms of your admissions and everything. Right. So let's take a look at the next slide and uh, let's discuss the trends of the international education. What I'm going to do is sort of lay foundation of perspective on the, on the international education and uh, actually the need uh, for technology to change how students are being accessed and uh, how the universe, uh, how the students are applying to different universities around the globe. So many of this uh, information is going to be something you already know. Um, so you know we have been uh, facing enormous enrollment uh, for the past two decades and we've been talking about this um, Currently here, if I talk about the international trends of uh, students applying across the globe, uh, it's a very huge number that we see. It is It has uh, enormously increased and is much, much higher uh, with the growing years. You can see uh, Canada has become one of the favorite destinations of students um, from India. And uh, U.S. again has been one of the favorite spots, but uh, it is decreasing since past two years. U.K. is becoming one common place uh, and a favorite one because of the extended two-year uh, two uh, work permit, and it's quite great. Uh, rest of the countries quite uh, fall in the smaller zone, but it's still a lot many students actually prefer to go there still. So here is an enrollment uh, enrollment trend. So if we have a look uh, and um, we monitor, we can again see that Canada has become the recent favorite destination for all the students, especially from India, because the universities are quite appealing, the PR rules are quite appealing, and that is the reason. Uh, the trend for USA has quite decreased because of the uh, difficulty in terms of uh, the settlement rules. Uh, Australia has been one of the very common destination uh, all these years and since there's a drop in US it has been increasing and uh, for UK it is increasing because uh, as we discussed uh, because of the two-year work permit and uh, New Zealand has been not, not very uh, favorite destination but it's still 
persists and a lot many students prefer to do, go there as well. This trend uh, is actually um, a lot of factors have been driving these numbers and the student mobility over these years to these different countries. There might be safety, there might be, you know, um, the cost, high costs attached to studying abroad, etc. Also, the appeal of universities worldwide, it affects and the universities have been recruiting more and more international students for the same reason. One thing here is it's, it's actually my perspective. It's very complex to apply to many of these universities and that also affects a student uh, applying to a country. And uh, although I don't have any empirical numbers, but it's very tough and uh, I'm, I'm comfortable saying that the admission uh, is one of the most complex subjects in terms of submitting an application, right? So going forward, um, all this is also quite related to the news around English testing right now. Um, so we have seen that uh, uh, in terms of international testing today, uh, due to COVID, all the universities have been going towards um, more relaxations and giving more relaxations and switch it, switching to a more autonomous form of testing like the Duolingo test and uh, rather than the centralized testing. And the testing has also uh, been challenging for, you know, a, a, from past a few years in terms of security, the bias, etc., etc. Now the universities are actually taking the Duolingo test and uh, how the coronavirus has shut down all the testing centers around the globe. It's actually a big factor driving it to the top. Uh, Going forward, if I see the accessibility for applicants, so the universities have been accepting the Duolingo as a substitute for test cancellations around the globe. And just beyond the physical accessibility, it is also about the attached cost of uh, all the other standardized tests around the globe. And it becomes an important factor why the students actually should go for the Duolingo test, right? Since all you guys are preparing right now, it's important and it's empirical to understand why exactly it's a beneficial deal for you. So a powerful way to understand the costs, uh, it is very important to understand how does, you know, um, somebody feel um, who is currently uh, going through the tests in non-US dollar currency. Um, so it is, uh, it's, it's about a relative uh, economic principle called the purchasing parity, which has been explained here. Right, so the Duolingo actually looked at costs around the tests uh, uh, hosted by us or TOEFL, and the average amount comes out to be $200, which is uh, going to cost around 14,000 rupees in INR. It's a huge amount, right? It's a huge investment, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing for all the parents and students to put in that money. And that is why uh, it is important to talk about the cost that you're putting into these tests, right? So Duolingo actually brings that cost down. Next important thing is the accessibility, uh, which also uh, is something that people neglect uh, living in, you know, uh, good techy cities and uh, it might be taken for granted. For But for many people who are living in cities which are not easily accessible, it forms an important part. So the test center's coverage around the globe is uh, not that broad and there is coverage of major test providers around the globe uh, here on this graph and there is one test center per two million people and that's uh, quite not broad and if i talk about the internet although it is not very vast and there are still areas where the internet is not accessible uh, but still, it's, it's much better uh, numbers and it, this is the best demographic which actually pushes the student towards the Duolingo English test uh, in areas where it is not uh, accessible, where other tests are not accessible. And at this moment, when all the test centers are shut down, it's actually a great thing that you guys have the liberty to give this test, you know, sitting back at your homes. So all these pr principles have been considered, and that is how Duolingo has been framed. So before that, um, I will actually take you to a quick um, slide. So Duolingo is, popul uh, is uh, popularly known uh, for being one of the best language language learning apps. And uh, so here, uh, I'm gonna show you one slide, and this will give you a glimpse of how the test centers 
um, you know how the both the tests are uh, assessed on different factors and uh, so you are even more excited to take a duolingo test comparing the cost the running time and the sharing cost etc so let us quickly go ahead so first of all we will cover some important pointers and since many of you would be unfamiliar with the test uh, we could take a deeper dive into various factors or the Duolingo test before we actually go about learning more about it, right? So the biggest difference between the Duolingo and other tests is the accessibility, right? So this is online on-demand test, which means you don't have to go to a test center. You can take it from uh, your home itself. You don't have to make a pre-booked appointment and you have to take the test from your computers whenever you're ready. The test only comes at a cost of $49 and uh, and you can easily get the results, right? Um, and you can share it with the universities and that is completely free of cost, right? So if I just quickly move on to the last slide, you see that if you have to share your IELTS score, TOEFL score with universities and which is quite a man mandatory thing, you have to incur a lot of cost. Whereas here uh, in the Duolingo test, you're not paying any extra amount to getting it reported to the universities right so another important factor um, is the uh, comprehensiveness and uh, how exactly uh, you know this proficiency test uh, is, is carried out uh, so it actually assesses you on two more signals um, of english proficiency than the other uh, tests which is interview and write example so the interview and the writing sample is not something that you are marked on so you're not given marks on those two um, uh, sections but actually it is shared with the institute so you get a chance to share with the university and uh, you can help the university to know you better and uh, you you can and the university can actually see how organic you are and uh, that is it and you can share uh, all that you want to say about yourself and it's a direct communication between you and the universities right so if i quickly check this uh, okay so sorry about this okay so you are being assessed on reading writing listening as um, the other tests uh, but in addition you are given a video interview round and a writing sample right so going forward um so the overall test experience of the Duolingo test is very fast. It's rapid. The students can take the test in uh, in, in a period of one hour, and uh, although it can also vary uh, uh, from student to student, and I'll go on explaining that in the later slides. But um, it's it's uh, the students receive the results within 48 hours, and which is a brilliant thing, and share it instantly with the universities and any number of schools, right? So this is one appealing thing about Duolingo and especially at this point of year and when you have deadlines to meet, when you have to get a result and when the students are trying to get a result for the IELTS or TOEFL or their English proficiency so that they can apply to universities uh, with approaching deadlines, so that's actually, actually great, right? The next thing is security and uh, accuracy. So these are uh, two more important points um, and I'll go on explaining why. Uh, you can uh, trust these results. Uh, these are administered in two ways in terms of security and accuracy. To make sure you know you're not getting help from outside resource, like you're not asking answers from your friend or your family member, or not referring to any website while giving this test or a book or your phone, right? So a lot of tech actually goes into that. Um, this. Um, the entire experience is recorded. It, it might be via webcam, screen, uh, the motion of your, uh, your mouse or your keyboard and any movement that you're making is actually being recorded and uh, you know it is reviewed in two ways uh, it, one using AI uh, to detect any suspicious behavior and then there are proctors who actually review it so in any terms you are um, not allowed to you know refer to any website although this seems like a test you have to give at home and you can do so but it's not actually like that uh, it is very 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 importantly monitored uh, very closely monitored so you have to take it, care about that right so it's uh, quite uh, we have quite a, a 
discussed quite all the details but uh, before me the duolingo is different from the and you see um, right you actually you know spend a lot of lot of money in uh, reporting these scores to the university so this actually makes a lot of difference right so now that we have understood the test and uh, we know much better about the test and why it's reliable why it's better so now we're uh, let us just talk about how the different schools and universities are putting them into practice as a part of the application process since most of you guys or many of you guys will be making their applications soon right so you need to understand how the universities are using it so it's actually good that um, you know the students who 170 countries have been taking dual language test and uh, which means it is quite uh, believable it's quite credible right um, Going forward, um, the Duolingo test is being accepted by across uh, about 900 universities around the globe. And uh, it, it's great that, uh, you know, all the universities are moving to a more technological way uh, to assess you. And uh, going forward, okay, so we have some FEQ and uh, go to a more technological way uh, to assess you and uh, going to a more technological way. Uh, to assess you and uh, going forward okay so we have some FAQs here and uh, these are the questions that have been most uh, prominently asked by all the students all this while so I'm just gonna quickly answer them and uh, they're gonna give you a lot of clarity on uh, uh, how the test is and anything you might wonder right so first of all what is the Duolingo English test um, although it is quite clear but the Duolingo English test, it's uh, an English proficiency assessment uh, for all the international students uh, and uh, who are applying to different institutions. And the test is available online on demand, which means you can give it any time that you're ready. Uh, you have to take the test uh, sitting back at your home using a laptop or a webcam. So the test is uh, all the time administered and, uh, you know, it measures uh, the question difficulty. So one important thing about uh, the Duolingo test is it's adaptive, right? So it will actually measure the difficulty level and present you with questions according to what you've answered before. So we would go about understanding uh, what adaptiveness means in the further classes, but um, to just introduce it to you. So that it, it's um, the, the test has basic three sections. Uh, which are also admin administered in other English proficiency tests. But in addition, uh, it has a video interview and writing sample round. Uh, although you are not marked on these two sections, but it is directly sent to the university. So it's a way for you to communicate, you know, face to face with the university and tell them who you are. So the test can be taken um, uh, at home and last for about one hour and you get the test results within 48 hours and they can be shared shared with any number of universities further on and yeah why should i take the duolingo english test okay so we have actually discussed quite few pointers in terms of accessibility the security the accuracy or uh, the cost of the Duolingo English test, right? So it's a more convenient way for all the students. It's more accessible. It's right there. You have to just open up laptops and or desktops and give the test, right? It's a cost-effective way. On an average, uh, other exams would have been costing you $200, but this exam is just going, going to um, cost you $50, right? It's a much cheaper price point. And um, also, you, also, the you know, costs associated with you going to the test center uh, if it's not quite nearby. Uh, all of this has, you know, been just removed and it, uh, it's, a, it's a savior in terms of, you know, accessing your exam, right? Uh, also, you, you can share the results with any number of universities. So uh, the cost that you incur while applying and, you know, getting your score reported to different universities, you save that.
So Duolingo has actually been accepted by institutions around the globe, uh, across multiple countries, and uh, uh, you, you, you know, in their admission process, in their reviewing process. But uh, to exactly see which, if your institution or the university that you're applying accepts the Duolingo English test, you can actually go to the university website and check it there. Otherwise, go to the Duolingo website and you can see the list of all the accepting institutions there. Uh, there would be a search bar. Just quickly fill out the university name that you're applying to and just see if they come in the list and they pop up on the screen. Uh, it would be accepting the Duolingo test. Uh, at the same time, uh, just make sure which every university is applying to, uh, you can check the university website. It would be mentioned there uh, in the program requirements. So how is the Duolingo English test being used by institutions? So accepting institutions have been using Duolingo English test for different purposes. It might be accessing you additionally, it might be a substitute for your English uh, you know, proficiency tests. Um, they have become a good part of your application uh, process and uh, it fulfills the English proficiency requirements. So uh, that is how the institutions are using it. It, however, depends on the institution right now on how they want to use the Duolingo test. So where uh, and when can I take the Duolingo English test? So practically you can take it anytime and anywhere. Uh, you just need to have to be technically sound. You should have a laptop with you. You should have you should be in a quite a testing environment, uh, which is uh, a quiet place. You should have good Wi-Fi network, and that's it. Um, one thing: make sure when you are giving your test, have a good uh, Wi-Fi network. And in, uh, in our third day of the class, we will discuss on the prerequisites when you're giving your dual with test, and you know if what if uh, the test doesn't upload, or what if a failure comes out, right? So we will. Take, the, uh, take up all those pointers in the class three, don't worry. So how much does the Duolingo English test cost? So I'm repeating it again. Uh, it costs you $49, uh, which is US dollars, right? Uh, so that, that is the amount with which you can book a Duolingo test. How long does the Duolingo English test take? Okay, so this tech test is going to take you less than an hour to complete. However, the exact amount uh, is variable according to a person since the test is adaptive. Uh, so adaptiveness of the test is something we're going to further discuss. And uh, how often can I take the Duolingo English test? So you may receive certified results for up to two tests uh, in a 30 day period which starts on the computer date of your first certified test, right? So if you complete a test and your results are not certified, it will not count again this limit, right? So there's a limit of two tests that you can take within a period of 30 days after giving your first test. So uh, how long are your Duolingo test, English test results valid for? So this is quite similar to the IELTS exam. Uh, the test results are valid for two years from the day uh, that it has been certified. So how effective the Duolingo English test is at measuring English proficiency? So yes, indeed, it is absolutely, uh, you know, that research has been done. And uh, you can actually escalate um, the same to, uh, you know, uh, Duolingo as well if you uh, feel about the confusion. But it is testing you on basic three pointers, listening, writing and uh, speaking. And uh, that is the same way you are being assessed in the other traditional exams. And it does. Uh, you know, it does the testing in quite a different way, but it is actually one of, uh, you know, one of the tests which is quite efficient in measuring the English proficiency because it actually measures, uh, you know, your vocabulary. Uh, and that is one part why it's more difficult. Uh, one, one thing is um, it's not easily accessible. There's a lot of confusion among, uh, among all the students, how, how they need to study the Duolingo test. There's no clarity on the pattern. But that is why we are here and uh, um, we will actually help you 
understand in depth how the test works and uh, how you are being assessed on different pointers, right? So how can you make sure that your camera and microphone are working properly, right? So in order to take the test, you need a properly working webcam and a microphone, right? If your camera is or your microphone is not working, you will not be able to uh, assess your test or even start it, right? So if you're unsure about your camera or microphone, uh, or you will just um, you know have a good look in the settings of your system and uh, make sure you give permissions to your computer uh, to allow the camera and the microphone on and uh, make sure it's working properly. Have a good check before you go about uh, you know, starting the test. So which IDs are accepted for Duolingo English tests? So there's a range of IDs which are accepted all across the globe. But for particularly Indians, you can get any ID. Uh, it might be a government issued uh, photo ID card. It might be a driver's license, right? Or um, it might be a passport, right? So these three IDs are accepted. So when you begin your test, it actually asks for a, for your ID. You have to show the front of your test, uh, of your ID and then uh, in the second picture you have to show the back of the ID. Uh, your ID has to be in a good condition so just make sure you have it handy. Uh, make sure you keep it with you uh, for uh, you know sitting for the test. Uh, it's quite important right. So I think we've taken up quite all the queries that uh, you know which could, which could actually pop it in your head in the first go and uh, this class was all about, you know, understanding the Duolingo test, why it's important. Um, now, with so many be benefits around, uh, you know, revolving around the Duolingo test, I'm pretty sure you're all excited to learn and uh, uh, stay with us. And uh, I hope you're ready to, uh, you know, make sure you have a good score and join one of the top universities around the globe and make your study abroad dream a success. I'll see you again in the next lecture.